All right, I want to talk a little bit about this religion of orthodoxy, or basically Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, you know, all these different branches of this Orthodox religion. And I'm going to read you an article from this website called wayoflife.org. Uh, I don't agree with everything David Cloud uh, promotes, but he, he is, you know, sound, sound in a lot of his doctrines, and he preaches the right gospel, so I, I do agree with him on this. And also, I know that Jason Cooley brought, brought this out in one of his other videos. Uh, but you know, I, I don't I don't recommend Cooley's ministry anymore. I, I don't you know whole whole other issue with that. But I you know I don't recommend Cooley's ministry. Although I don't I don't say the guy's lost. I just don't recommend his ministry. I'm not going to go into details of that. But uh, just just some, some doctrinal differences we have. But this this uh, article on orthodoxy. It really goes over the history of orthodoxy and this thing of how Eastern Orthodoxy, it's not it's not biblical, uh, it's not Bible believing Christianity, it's not biblical salvation, and all it is is just Roman Catholic paganism repackaged. So let me read it to you from the wavelife.org. Orthodoxy is that branch of sacramental Christianity which broke off from the Roman Catholic Church in ten fifty four AD. Uh, until 1054, the, the Eastern and Roman churches were two branches of the same sacramental body. The division began when the Roman em Emperor Constantine moved his capital away, or moved his capital from Rome to Constantinople in 330 AD. Powerful church leaders claimed authority over the large regions and were vying for supremacy. There was the Bishop of Rome in the West and four patriarchs in the East. The main point of contention between uh, contention between the Eastern and, and the Western divisions was the papacy. More important than doctrine was the issue of power and authority. The Eastern Orthodox rejected the Pope while retaining Rome's sacramental system and most of Rome's unscriptural doctrines. Exactly, it's just Roman Catholic doctrine repackaged. The Eastern Orthodoxy, they share so much of the same beliefs as Roman Catholicism. You know, infant baptism, which, which um, if you read Acts chapter 8, verses 36 to 38, it totally destroys infant baptism because Acts chapter 8, verse 36 to 38 proves that someone has to believe before they can get baptized. Well, babies, they're not capable of believing, so they can't, it's not scriptural baptism. Uh, praying to Mary, you know, all this other stuff, you know, uh, um, holy water, you know, incense, all this other unbiblical stuff that the Orthodox Church does that they, that they just borrowed from Roman Catholicism, and they go over some of this in this article. Uh, let me just go down there. The Roman Catholic Church and its twin Eastern Orthodoxy were formed by a spiritually adulterous relationship between the political empire and the apostate church leaders. The latter claimed authority over the Lord's churches and amalgamated pagan practices with New Testament truth to form an impure form of Christianity. This explains the origins of such unscriptural practices such as the Mass, Purgatory, Sacraments, Prayers to and for the Dead, Consecrated Buildings, Mary Worship, Scapulars, and, and the Rosary. Eastern Orthodoxy has its roots in the same apostasy. Exactly. I mean, they do all the same stuff, all the same heresies, all the same paganism that the Catholic Church, Catholic Church does. But you know, but they're they're not the same. They're 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 different. Yeah, sure. Again, it's just Roman Catholic. It's Roman Catholicism repackaged. It's just Roman Catholic paganism repackaged. Uh, Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy both claim direct descent from Christ and, and the apostles. But that claim, this claim, but that this claim is bogus. And or the, that that sorry, but that. Not the best at reading on my phone, but that this claim is bogus. All right, this claim is bogus. It is evidence in their non-apostolic doctrines and practices. Uh, exactly. I mean, they claim, oh, we're the true church. The Orthodox still say we're the true church. The Catholic still say we're the true church. Um, okay, then why is love what they do not in Scripture? In fact, contradict Scripture. Right, you know, how does that work? Uh, let's go down there. Gospel and Doctrine. Unlike Roman Catholicism, Orthodoxy rejects the papacy, purgatory, and the doctrine of indulgences. So there's some stuff they got right, obviously. Sorry, my eye. It's really hot in my room right now. I'm, I'm sweating like crazy. Uh, Roman Catholicism and, and uh, Orthodoxy has, con has a consecrated priesthood and seven sacraments, which only the priests have authority to, to perform. Baptism, anointing, communion, uh, communion, penance, holy orders, marriage, and holy unction. A handbook of Denominations in the United States, 9th edition. So, I mean, same thing. I mean, only the priests can do these certain holy orders, you know, the holy sacraments. You know, it's paganism. It's not biblical Christianity. It's not New Testament Christianity. Uh, it's, by, it's by the sacraments that men are saved. They are channels of grace in contrast to the New Testament ordinance of baptism and the Lord's Supper, which are simple memorials and reminders. They're not, they're reminders. The Lord's Supper and baptism are not 
uh, like like part of part of your salvation. Salvation is found through Jesus Christ and Him alone. You can see John chapter fourteen verse six and Acts four twelve. You know, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 says that Jesus Christ is, there's one mediator, mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And Romans chapter 8 talks about how Christ intercedes for us. The, the Spirit of Christ, he intercedes for us. So, this, so the uh, Lord's Supper and baptism are biblical, biblical practices, but they're not, they're not part of your salvation. They're just remembrance. The Lord's Supper is done in remembrance. It's not some cannibalistic type of pagan ritual the Catholics do. And baptism, again, Acts chapter 8, proves that it happens after salvation, after somebody believes, not before. So, infant baptism doesn't work. Uh, in orthodoxy, salvation begins with baptism, which is called the new birth. It goes down there. Uh, salvation continues with the holy uh, chrismatation. hope I'm saying that right. Which follows baptism and consists of anointing by an orthodox priest. It is by this ritual that the Holy Spirit is supposedly given. So salvation is not a one-time event, it's a continual process where you, you get baptized and then you're kind of, I guess you're partly saved and you get, you get partly a little bit more saved and then, and then you receive the Holy Spirit and then you get, you know, it's a, it's a continual workspace process. It's not a one-time event as the Bible teaches. Uh, you know, like, like in Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 10 talks about, talks about how Christ died once for sins. He died once, he suffered once. It's not some kind of continual re-sacrificing of animals like, like the uh, Levit Levitical priesthood would do. Salvation continues then with the participation of the Holy Communion or the Holy Eucharist, whereby Christ is supposedly sacrificed anew in the bread and wine of the Eucharist becomes the actual body and blood of Christ. This is Orthodox. This is the Orthodox form of the Catholic Mass. Same thing again, just re Roman Catholicism repackaged, paganism repackaged. And again, if you, if you read um, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, verse 24 to 25, the Mass, or not the Mass, the Communion, not Mass, the Lord's Supper is done in remembrance. It's not a continual re-sacrificing, you know, like the Levitical priesthood. Um, it's funny because he, it's most of the Catholic Bibles actually remove Hebrews chapter 10 from their Bible, from their perverted translation, because Hebrews chapter 10 actually, can, actually condemns the Catholic priesthood. Because it goes over this thing of a priest having to have to having to do a continual offering for sins, which is talking about Levitical priesthood, which is what the Catholic priest does. The Catholic priest is having to continually offer up Christ on the cross, like the Levitical priesthood does. So, ironically, the reason why the Catholic Bible is to get rid of Hebrews chapter ten is because Hebrews ten condemns their priesthood. Not going to go into that, but I could go on and on about the paganism and wickedness of the Eucharist. It's it's not biblical. It's not the biblical Lord's Supper. It's not biblical communion. It is a pagan perversion of it, cannibalistic perversion too. Um, there's a go there. Orthodoxy venerates Mary as the ever virgin mother of God. And it goes down there. It, it just quotes some orthodox sources. Prayers are offered for the dead, which are also believed to pray for those on earth. So you basically necromancy. You're praying to the dead. You're talking to the dead. Necromancy, which is condemned in Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 10 and 12. Or wait, sorry, Deuteronomy chapter 18, sorry, verses 10 and 12. Actually, let me, let me just look that up real quick. I don't remember the exact verse, but it's, I'm pretty sure it's Deuteronomy chapter 18. Yeah, it is. It's Deut Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 10 to 12. Uh, necromancy. You know, if you're talking to the dead. It's, it's necromancy. It's condemned in the scripture. It's an abomination to God. Um, as in Roman Catholicism, Orthodoxy exalts its own tradition to the place uh, of equal, or a place of authority equal to that of scripture. Exactly, same thing as Catholicism. The holy traditions are an equal authority to the Word of God. Never, never mind the fact that most of their pagan traditions contradict the Word of God. But holy tradition overthrows the Word of God in some cases. Uh, membership, it goes on there, ecumenicism, ecumenicalism, all this other stuff. So the bottom line is that Eastern Orthodoxy is not Bible-believing Christianity. It's just Roman Catholic paganism repackaged. And I've said that before, but it's true. And same thing with, with Protestantism, because Protestantism, they're going to say, oh, you're a Protestant. Uh, no, Protestant, Protestant, modern-day Protestantism is just Roman Catholic doctrine repackaged, too. Modern-day Protestantism is just, again, Roman Catholic paganism repackaged. So don't be deceived by this whole thing of Eastern Orthodoxy. As I've said, it, it is not New Testament Christianity. It is just paganism, Roman Catholic, Roman Babylonian paganism repackaged with different names and different, you know, different, different order of service, but same paganism. So... These are Orthodox Christians, they need the gospel. They're not saved. 
uh, they, need, they need to get saved through the blood of Jesus Christ and quit trying to confess their sins to the priest or, or you know, sacrifice Christ like the Levitical priesthood and all this other stuff. Uh, salvation, salvation through Jesus Christ alone. It's through Him, not through, I mean, you know, Acts 4.12, you know, John 14, 6. Salvation is only through Jesus Christ, not through any other means. So, don't be deceived by this whole thing of Eastern Orthodoxy. Again, Roman Catholic paganism repackaged. God bless you. Goodbye. Thank you.